This is Michael Castaneda of Plastic Audio, and we are on week three of my one episode challenge for my Podcasting Basics video series. This week we are doing audio editing, audio software. Very excited this, about this week, so let's get right into it. This is a photo of the last podcast that I edited for a podcast called Reality Bites. It's actually their series finale. And this is what we're going to be talking about today, the DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. The one that I use is Pro Tools, but we'll talk about other ones. But this is going to be a typical uh, a look of the sessions that I do. It's going to be a bunch of tracks. There's going to be a lot of audio files in this particular one. Since it's multi-track, it's going to be cascading. I'll talk about that as well. This is a photo of a, a rock band that I recorded, my buddy's band, The Happy Casualties. We did this last year at the Cinema Bar in Culver City. So this is a lot more tracks. This is a lot more audio, a lot bigger files, but the same, the same concepts that, that, that I use, the same skill that I use when I record uh, uh, music is, is the same thing that I apply when I do podcasting. So they're exactly the same. So we're going to be talking about waveforms, and I'll explain that going forward. But I just want you to be able to see it first. This is this is what um, audio looks like when you dump it into a DAW. This is actually a picture of the theme music for a podcast. So pop music is going to look like that. That's what the theme looks like. That's the waveform of a stereo track. This is going to be what dialogue looks like. So on the top, we have uh, one channel that has two voices going to it. On the bottom, we have one channel that has two voices going to it. So it's four voices total. You could tell from the top one that there's a lot more activity going on there. So that person is talking a lot more and it's a lot louder because the size of the waveform is so much bigger um, vertically than the bottom one. This is actually going to be waveform of music. So for that uh, uh, music recording, the band recording that I did, the top one, the blue one, is actually a kick drum and the bottom one is going to be a snare drum. So just so you can see the difference between um, what audio looks like from voice to um, instruments. So we're going to get right into the intros of DAW's for podcasting. So first off, like we mentioned in the last video, if you haven't seen the last video, go back and watch week two where we talk about um, audio gear. But there's a lot of different DAWs, and the difference uh, depends on what you use them for. So if you use a Apple computer like I do, GarageBand is going to come for free, and that's more than enough for podcasting, for recording, and for editing. You can upgrade to Logic, which is also by Apple, and it's going to give you a lot more features and functionality, and it's, uh, it's mainly geared towards people that are uh, doing music, so for music creation. The most popular DAW that you can use for recording and editing is going to be Audacity. A lot of podcasters use that. I don't use it myself, but I've heard a lot of good things about it and a lot of good things about the actual company. Uh, people actually make a living recording or, or actually editing on Audacity, so it's, it's, it's very reliable and it's very easy to use. Uh, Reaper is another good one that that that's that's not free, but it's it's practically free. You can you can buy a license for very cheap. Um, it's a very very good DAW that gives you a lot of options for music too. Ableton Live is cheap. I use that as well. I think there are entry level uh, uh, DAWs just under or about a hundred bucks, and that's that that's really geared towards people that make music or that do live performances. A step up from that is Pro Tools, and that's what I use. It's what I've used the longest. I've used it since 2004. Um, they offer a monthly subscription that's 25 bucks that I, I, I use that way, and I, I, I know and really like Pro Tools, and that's, that's basically just for recording and editing. There's not a lot of you know music making there. And then another very popular one is Hindenburg. And that you can get a license for various prices, and that's mainly geared towards journalists or writers. I don't have experience with iOS and tablet DAWs necessarily, but they do exist. So I just wanted to make you aware of that if you have an iPad and you wanted to edit on your iPad, or if you have an iPhone or a smartphone and wanted to record and edit on there, you can. I'm just not familiar with them, but they do exist, so you're going to have to do research. So digital audio workstation DAW. So that's the program 
that is used on your computer to record and edit audio. All DAWs look different in varying options like we, like we talked about before. One of the things that we didn't talk about last week because I didn't want to confuse you, and I'm not going to confuse you this week with it, but I want to make you aware of it, especially if you recorded on a handheld device and haven't gotten to a DAW yet. A DAW yet. There's going to be something called sampling rate and bit depth that you're going to have to select when you start a new session. There, there's, there, there's so much uh, um, content online available if you want to learn about sampling rate and bit depth. I'm not going to go into it because it's, it's a... It's a very, very advanced topic, but for our purposes right now, when you do open a session, the sampling rate is going to be 44.1K, and the bit depth is going to be 16-bit. Again, if you want to look up, there's plenty of videos about that, uh, and I'll talk about it in later videos. Basically, with DAWs, there's two major modes. There's a timeline and there's a mixer. So the timeline is going to give you a visual representation of the waveform, and it's going to let you arrange it in different tracks, and it's going to let you move it around. The mixer is going to be like the traditional recording console or desk that you're used to when you think of recording studios. You're going to have I.O. Anytime I talk about I.O., that means input-output. You're going to have I.O., you're going to have signal processing, and you're going to have routing capabilities from that mixer. So here's an example of it. The one on the left, that's going to be the timeline. The one above, that's going to be the mixer. And then again, the close-up of that waveform of that audio. So here's what the mixer looks like. And it, the, again, this is, this is going to be addressed in a further video. I just want to make you aware of what it is and what it looks like and what it does. But it... it it's it's got a lot to it so I don't want to spend too much time on it but up top you're gonna to have plugins where you can add uh, equalization you can add compression so that's all your signal processing uh, below that you're gonna be able to pan uh, and then below that you're gonna have your faders and that's basically gonna control the volume of that track this is a close-up of a plugin this is a close-up of a compressor again Compressors are something that you may or may not use. You really don't have to worry about it right now, but I want to make you aware of it. And again, like sampling rate and bit depth, there is numerous videos out there talking about compression um, and how to use it. Something we're not going to get into now. EQ is another uh, a, a very used plugin that um, you'll probably use sooner or later. So this is what an EQ looks like. And if you have any experience with stereo, uh, uh, old stereos, they'll have the uh, equalizer, the uh, graphic EQ, you know, you're, you're probably very familiar with that. So what is a waveform? A waveform is a visual representation of recorded audio. It gives us the ability to see a sound source. So again, we're going to use the dialog, for example. So if you participated last week in the one episode challenge, you're going to have recorded your first podcast. When you dump it into the DAW, you can now actually see what that audio looks like. You can see uh, the speech patterns. You can see the actual speech of the people that you recorded. So the big thing about DAWs and why they're so powerful, or one of the reasons why they're so powerful, is because they give you non-destructive editing. So when you work with digital audio as opposed to analog, as opposed to recording on tape, the changes you make to an audio file can be undone. So while you're editing, if you make a fade, if you make a cut, if you delete something, you can just undo that action and you'll go back to the original um, state of that file. And that's very, very important. And that was you know, a huge breakthrough with digital audio. So what changes can you make to that audio? You can make multiple copies. You can cut it in half. You can cut it in a third. You can slow down the audio. You can speed it up. You can change the pitch. You can apply filters. Basically anything. So how do you choose a DAW? Well, going back to the previous weeks, it's all about what your show requires. That's, that, that's the first step in determining what DAW is going to be right for you. So the, the podcast that I have with this video series, I use Anchor FM. I've talked about that a lot, but I've used Anchor FM. It's just an app on my phone, and it allows me to just talk into my phone. There's no editing necessary, uh, it, and it gets distributed to you know whatever, um, whatever host that I wanted to. That's all that 
that this particular podcast requires. If you're doing an audio drama or if you're doing something a little bit more high end that maybe later uh, down the line you want to monetize and, and, and you need better sounding mics than just the one that's built in with the phone, then you're going to have to figure out whatever you can afford and you're going to have to figure out whatever um, whatever um, options that, that DAW gives you that you're going to need for that show. There's also ways to cut down on post-production. Uh, a lot of people don't like to edit. So live streaming is very popular. So people will use Twitch or people will just live stream uh, right to YouTube and then they'll just take that file and then they'll put that on iTunes or they'll link it to Spotify or whatever. Some people don't like to do um, posts. They really don't because it's just it, it takes up too much time and their show doesn't require them to do that. Another uh, um, way that you can cut down on time is they're now selling consoles that have pretty much everything built in for you to do the you know quote unquote editing on the fly. So the biggest the biggest innovation right now or the biggest product for that is from a company called Rode and they made the Rodecaster Pro. It's a multi-track recorder that has hot keys. So it basically has pads that you can hit to trigger different sounds. So it can trigger sound effects or it can trigger entire sound files. So if I'm sitting around this table and I have three other people, we can we can each have a microphone. I can hit a button to hit record. I can hit one of the hotkeys that's gonna play the show theme. I can hit another hotkey that's gonna play an ad. And then I can go into us interviewing, hit stop. Everything's done right then and there as we're doing it. Or if you don't wanna do all that, um, or you don't have that device, you have like a handheld device, you can contact someone like me, like Plastic Audio, and we'll do the editing for you. So how are sh shows structured? Uh, from an editing standpoint, it really comes down to how many tracks are needed. So you can have as little as one mono track or one stereo track. Um, a lot of people uh, uh, like to import multiple audio files to one stereo track and just do it that way. So rather than having a multi-track section, um, session, which we're going to talk about in a second, people just want one track. They want to uh, uh, put just the theme first. They want to put the intro right next to that. They want to put the interview and then the outro and just have everything on just one track. They don't want to have to deal with multiple tracks and fades and you know multiple uh, faders. It's just too much for them. They don't want to spend that much time. So I learned how to record using multiple tracks, using multi-track. So I'm just comfortable doing that because it gives me a lot more options. So why, why would I use multiple tracks instead of just using one track? So if I have all of my files on just one track, and let's say I EQ that one track, every audio file, so the theme, the intro, the interview, Everything on that track is going to be affected by that EQ. Now, there is other ways that I can affect just those files, but that's a little bit more advanced than what we're going to do. So for all intents and purposes, if you have everything on one track and you, you process it in a certain way, it's going to process everything. So what happens is, is if you have multiple tracks, you can do individual processing or individual volume automation to that, to that one track and it's just going to affect that one file. So for me, I like to do that um, because I like to have more control over what I'm doing. So if, you're, if your show does require post-production, um, here's what a typical session is going to look like. Uh, or here's uh, how we're going to set it up. You're going to open a new session. You're going to name it. Naming is very important down the line when you have a ton of episodes. So you're going to have to come up with some kind of naming convention that makes sense. You're going to import all the audio files and then you're going to name your tracks. If you're using a single stereo track, you're simply just going to drag and drop the audio files in the correct order that you want. So again, if your show is just, uh, let's say it's just an interview, then you're just going to have one track. You're going to do whatever volume uh, automation you want on it. You're going to set your levels. If you want to do a little bit of EQ, that's it. You're done. Let's say you have theme music before the um, interview. Then you would put your, you would drag and drop your theme music first. Then you would grab your interview and just slide that over. It's really easy. So it's just drag and drop if you're only using one track. Um, and then 
you're going to be done. After that, you would just export it. And just like when we uh, started this session, when you export, you're going to be able to pick your file type. Let's say it's a, a MP3 or it's a .wave. Or um, you're also going to be able to pick the um, the uh, specs for it. So you can so if you rec if you record it at a higher frequency or a sampling rate, then you'll be able to change that when you actually export it. It's completely up to you. Although for the most part, again, you're going to want to bounce it. Bouncing and exporting is kind of interchangeable. You're going to want to bounce it to 44, 1K, 16 bit, because that's what that's that's the same quality as a CD. If you're using multiple tracks, it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to drag and drop, but you're going to do it in a cascading order. So whatever's first is going to usually start on top if you if you want to do it that way. And then whatever comes next, you're going to move over because you don't want them you don't want them lined up. You don't want them in a column. You don't want them all vertical. You're going to want to move them, and I'll show you why. And again, you're going to adjust the faders, you're going to do whatever um, processing, and then you're going to export it. So one thing that we need to talk about while you're editing. This is probably the worst part, and you're going to learn the hard way because everyone learns this the hard way at some point. If you're on a Mac, this is, this is all too familiar, unfortunately. Uh, you're going to get the uh, uh, spinning beach ball of death, the beach ball of death or the spinning pinwheel. One of the things about software, one of the things about computers is they don't always work. Uh, oftentimes they crash. And when you're working, when you're mixing, when you're editing and you get this and your, your, your software crashes, um, you're going to learn the hard way that you have to save. And this is going to be the most important slide. And this is something that really no one talks about. And I don't know why they don't talk about it because it's very important. While you're editing, every so often, you're going to have to save. Because if you do get this beach ball of death, if you do get this spinning pinwheel, you're going to lose all of the progress that you made on that mix. So there's one very important shortcut that I want you to know. And that is Command S. So if you hold Command and press S, that's going to save your session. And that's on a Mac. It's going to be different on a PC. But on a Mac, save frequently. Uh, maybe when you start off, every 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 time you make a change, you're gonna you're gonna hold Command and hit S to save. You have to save your session. No matter how uh, much I talk about this, it's going to take you actually not saving and then having a file or having the software crash on you and you losing everything for you to uh, really, really realize that. But I'm telling you, this is something I don't want you to go through. Do not go through the beach ball because it's, it's really the worst. So that's it. So after you've imported everything, after you've processed your signal, after you've arranged it, after you exported, after you saved the whole way, you are done. The first episode of your podcast is now mixed. Next week, we are going to talk about, oh, next week is week four, and it's actually the last video in this series, and we're going to talk about podcast hosting. Well, specifically, it's going to be distribution, but it's mainly going to focus on podcast hosting. It's going to focus on statistics and iTunes because iTunes is the big one. So three weeks in, we have a show concept. We recorded it, and now we've edited our first episode. Congratulations. Follow Plastic Audio on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And if you have any questions... Follow podcast Q&A by Plastic Audio on Anchor FM. If you have any questions, I will answer all of those questions on a personal episode. So uh, a week from today, look forward to uh, week four where we learn how to distribute. Thank you.